Micro Powders produces a line of micronized wax powders for a wide array of end-use applications including coatings, inks, cosmetics, and personal care products. These additives provide a range of surface protection features including rub resistance, abrasion resistance, water repellency, as well as special effects such as matting, soft feel, and texturing. And they are employed in a variety of systems, from waterborne to solvent-borne, energy curable, 100% solids, and reactive formulations. The Micro Powders product line employs an extensive array of polymer chemistries to achieve the desired performance benefits. These include a broad range of synthetic and natural waxes, polyethylene, polypropylene, PTFE, polyamide, as well as polymer hybrids, for instance, PTFE in combination with polyethylene. Since many of these products are based on polymers with low surface energy, it's important to understand the proper technique for incorporating them, particularly into waterborne formulations. This video will recommend the best way to achieve proper wetting and dispersion of micronized wax powders for use in waterborne formulations. A good dispersion process achieves a more uniform distribution of the primary particles, which results in improved surface protection and mitigates appearance defects. In this procedure, we will prepare a 50% solids wax dispersion using a laboratory mixer. First, water is added to a container. We recommend retaining some of the water specified in the formulation to ensure good mixing and shear stress. The remaining water will be added at the end of the procedure once the wax particles are dispersed. We set our container and water under a high shear mixing blade. For best results, we recommend the use of a high speed impeller disc, which will provide sufficient shear energy to wet and disperse the wax particles and to break down any agglomerates that may be generated during the dispersion process. Next, we add a surfactant or wetting agent to the water while mixing at 1000 revolutions per minute. In this formulation, we're using Micro Powder's Microspersion EZ as the surfactant. This will reduce the surface tension of the water, allowing intimate contact between the water phase and each of the wax particles. Defoamer is then added to minimize any foam that might be generated by the wetting agent and the air pockets displaced within the wax agglomerates. After three minutes of mixing at 1000 revolutions per minute, we add the micronized wax. Once all the wax is added, we recommend increasing the mixing speed to 1600 revolutions per minute and a mixing time of 30 minutes. While the mixture may appear viscous and dull initially, the wax agglomerates will be sheared and dispersed into their primary particles. In time, you will notice a growing vortex, lower viscosity, and a higher gloss appearance. Since we want to ensure that the wax doesn't dissolve in the mixture, it would be helpful to monitor the dispersion temperature periodically as it should not exceed 40 degrees Celsius. The retained water can now be added and the mixing speed reduced to 800 revolutions per minute. We recommend mixing this final wax dispersion for about three minutes. Use a spatula to drain and examine the quality of the dispersion by looking for any agglomerates. Now let's check the dispersion using an Apiri grind gauge to ensure the wax particles fall within the micro powders specification. If you would prefer to purchase a predispersed wax, 
in an aqueous liquid form, Micropowders offers many of the most popular products in microspersion form. These high solids, non-ionic wax dispersions are easy to add directly to your final water-based formulation. Let's now add our pre-dispersed wax into a clear water-based formulation. Notice how easily the wax dispersion blooms into the clear coating vehicle. We don't recommend adding the dry powdered wax directly into the final waterborne formulation as this would typically lead to poor wetting and insufficient dispersion. Notice how difficult it is to properly wet and separate the agglomerated wax particles even with high shear. A drawdown of a formulation containing a properly dispersed wax on the right versus the same formulation that incorporated the dry powdered wax on the left will underscore the importance of proper wax dispersion. As the formulations dry, the agglomerated wax on the left will float to the surface, resulting in film defects and poor end use performance. You can see as well as hear the difference between the two. So, let's quickly review our recommendation for dispersing dry, micronized wax. Add most of the formulation's water to the container. Mix with a high-speed impeller disc at 1,000 revolutions per minute. Add a surfactant or wetting aid to reduce the surface tension of the water. Add a defoamer to minimize any foam generated by the surfactant. After three minutes of mixing, add the dry powdered wax. Increase the mixing speed to 1600 revolutions per minute and mix for 30 minutes. Add the balance of the formulation's water to the dispersion and reduce the mixing speed to 800 revolutions per minute for three minutes. You now have a properly dispersed wax that can be added to any waterborne formulation. <laughs>